In this video, we're going to derive a relationship between the beta integral function and the gamma integral function. Um, a reminder that the playlist for the videos is at the website digital-university.org. If you go there and click on the calculus section and then scroll down to where it says integral functions, uh, all the problems that we have concerning gamma integral functions and beta integral functions are in that section there. Okay, remember uh, the basic definition of the uh, beta integral function was this, where these are written in a certain order now. This is x, 1 minus x, and the exponent on these two terms correspond to the first two terms of the beta function, so that this is m, the exponent on this term is m minus 1, and if this is n, the exponent on this term is n minus 1. So for example, if we had an integral of x cubed times 1 minus x to the fifth, that would be the beta function of 4 minus 1 is 3, 6 minus 1 is 5, that would be the beta function of 4, 6. And again, um, the limits on x go from 0 to 1. And then in our introductory video, we had shown that the algebraic form is equal to the trigonometric form. And then in our previous video, we had also shown that the beta function of mn is the same as the beta function of nm. So we can reverse the order of these two and it doesn't change the value of the beta function. Now remember from the videos that you had seen concerning the gamma integral function, this was the basic definition and we had established these equations here which in turn gave us an integral expression for the uh, permutation function here for the factorial function. n factorial is equal to this integral. Now as I say in this video we want to show that the algebraic function of the gamma integral is related to the algebraic function of the beta integral. And to do that let's consider this. Suppose we have two factorial functions, m factorial and n factorial. Both of them are written in terms now um, of their respective integral functions. And what happens if we multiply these two factorials together? What kind of an expression do we get? So we have m factorial times n factorial. And if you watched our previous videos, uh, when we were dealing with the gamma function, we had this situation where we were multiplying two integrals together. And what we had shown is that that's exactly the same thing as taking a double integral. So this would be equal to the double integral of x to the m e to the minus x and then y to the n e to the minus y dx dy where both x and y go from 0 to infinity. Now if we multiply these two terms together we would have e to the minus x plus y. If this was x squared plus y squared, it would be tempting perhaps to rewrite this in terms of polar coordinates where x squared plus y squared equals r squared. We don't have it like that. This is just x plus y. Um, but let's try a substitution. Suppose we call x is equal to u squared and y is equal to say v squared and 
try and rewrite this now in terms of polar coordinates, uh, what kind of an expression would that give us? So let's do our substitutions. We're going to say let x equal u squared dx that will be equal to 2 times u du and likewise we'll say let y equal v squared so dy equals 2 times v dv. So let's put these new substitutions into the integral here. Now x goes from 0 to infinity, so u squared is going to go from 0 to infinity. y goes from 0 to infinity, so v squared likewise of course is going to go from um, 0 to infinity. So this would be equal to then, we have m factorial times n factorial will equal the double integral x to the m, that would be u to the 2m e to the minus x would be e to the minus u squared y to the n would be then that's just going to be v to the 2n and e to the minus y will be e to the minus v squared. dx dy, that will be this times this, 2 times 2 is 4, we can put that out here, then we have u times v, u times v times du dv, and u and v both go from 0 to infinity. And this would be u to the 2m plus 1. This would be v to the 2n plus 1. We multiply those together. So let's just take this out. This is 2m plus 1. And this would be v to the 2n plus 1. Then we have e to the minus u squared times e to the minus v squared. That would be e to the minus u squared plus v squared. Now, if we want to, we can write this in terms of polar coordinates where r squared equals u squared plus v squared. And in each case notice that u goes from 0 to infinity and so does v. Now u was corresponding to the x variable, v was corresponding to the y variable, so it could be this type of situation. This axis u, u corresponds to the variable x. This axis v, as v corresponds to the variable y, we go from 0 to in plus infinity, from 0 to plus infinity, and then you would have a position vector r. And again, the magnitude of that is u squared plus v squared. And of course, this is an angle theta. Now notice r will go from 0 to infinity, but we're right here in the first quadrant, so theta will go from 0 to pi over 2. So once we completely write this integral in terms of polar coordinates, we're going to have a different set of limits on it. But here then, u, that's just equal to r times the cosine of theta, 
and V, that's going to be R times the sine of theta. So let's write that down. U is R cosine of theta. V is R times the sine of theta. So now what we can do is, oh, we're not ready yet though, we have du times dv. That is actually a uh, differential area element where if this is uv, then our differential area element du dv here is du, here is dv So du dv gives us this differential area element dA. Well, if we try to express dA in terms of polar coordinates, that gives us something a little bit different. Remember the setup for that. Here we have Cartesian coordinates x and y, or it could be u and v, it doesn't matter. But here then is a position vector r, and they, at an angle d theta, here it is again. So this line sector right here, that's equal to r times d theta, and then this is just dr. So this differential area element dA is equal to this times this, or that's r dr d theta. So in polar coordinates, the differential area element is not dv du, it's r dr d theta. And this is not, um, we haven't really proven that here, we just kind of demonstrated it. To prove it, you have to um, start with this and actually use the Jacobi determinant and you get this expression, but this is kind of a demonstration then that dv du is r dr d theta. So this is going to get replaced in terms of polar coordinates. That is going to be r dr d theta. And u, that's r times the cosine of theta. V, that's r times the sine of theta, and this times this will be e to the minus r squared. So let's go ahead then, and all we're going to do now then is take our integral and write it in terms of polar coordinates with using our substitutions here. So what we're going to have then is m factorial times n factorial. equals 4 double integral. And remember, r goes from 0 to infinity, theta goes from 0 to pi over 2. We'll put those limits in later. Okay, we have this times this, which is e to the minus r squared. So we have e to the minus r squared. u that's r times the cosine of theta. And that's to the 2m plus 1. And then v to the 2n plus 1, that's going to be r times the sine of theta. to the 2n plus 1. And then finally, du dv is r dr d theta. So this is now the two factorials multiplied out 
expressed in terms of polar coordinates. Now we haven't put the limits on it yet because we haven't separated the r terms from the theta terms. We'll do that in the uh, in the next step. So to continue on, this will equal. Let's do it like this. We'll have the integral. We have four. Now we're going to set the, separate the r terms from the theta terms. So here we have e to the minus r squared. Here we have r to the 2m plus 1. Times r to the 2n plus 1. Times r dr, r goes from 0 to infinity. Try to keep this in better focus. All you've done right now is just separate the r terms, e to the minus r squared, r to the 2m plus 1, r to the 2n plus 1 times r dr, r goes from 0 to theta, or from 0 to infinity. Now for the terms that involve theta. We have cosine theta, sine theta, d theta. Cosine theta to the 2m plus 1, sine of theta to the 2n plus 1, d theta, and theta, remember, goes from 0 to pi over 2. So this is equal to m factorial times n factorial, where our integral now is expressed in terms of polar coordinates. So as you can see, this gets a little bit involved, but actually we're almost there. I think what we'll do, though, is we'll stop the the uh, video at this point, and when you come back for the second half of the video, you will see this integral written at the top of the page, and then we'll clean this integral up a little bit. And once we do that, we're almost there as far as demonstrating the basic relationship between the beta integral and the gamma integral. So come back. Join us for the second half of the video, and we'll finish this problem off.